Hello, good morning. Welcome to uh, just look her out on the boat. One mystery mark this morning. And I'm hoping to show you some guilted breed. I like to fish. I like to fish on the morning. More so because there's less people around. Guiltheads, as a rule, you generally fish for them with a the flooding tide. Because what they'll do is they'll run in with the incoming water up your creeks, up your rivers, up your estuaries, and they'll feed with the flooding tide. What I like to try and do is I get I get to the mark, which is just after low water, just as the water starts to move. Now there's a bit of a pool just up there, and I think that the fish will hold up in the pool at low water, and then as soon as it starts to flood, they start moving in. So what you might find is you'll get you'll get one or two fish as they start flooding in, and then you might have to your bites might drop off. And you might have to follow them further upstream. Now the rigs, the rigs are as simple as you can get. You might see him in a minute. There's a big seal just sat on a bank over there. It's just a very simple running ledger with a snap swivel. I like about two foot, which is 20 pound line. And all I do, I think that's um, maybe a one or, or a two or cox and roll specimen. And you just just rag them. Now uh, you can fish other baits. Some people prefer lugworm, some like ragworm. Peeler crab is one of the best baits you can get, but it's not always available and it is quite expensive. I've caught plenty of them on ragworm. I know people have caught plenty of them on lugworm. If you were fishing in an area and there are a lot of crabs, even like a little crab, like a 20 pence piece, a 10 pence piece size crab, just, just a hardback crab, just hooked through the shell, just fished on a running ledger like this. I'll uh, get this cast back out, hopefully, we'll show you a fish. felt more like a bullet. That wasn't a brain bite. Well, a brain bite, a textbook brain bite. The rod will just arch over. So uh, you need to set the drag accordingly. I like like a spinning rod. You don't need much more from the boat. When you're fishing from the shore, like a flatty rod or a, or a bass rod. Just some it with a bit of giving. So we drag. It's not too tight, so a fish could take line if it wanted to. Generally, like I say, bring by all it is is your rod just down to run. With a light drag like that, hopefully, drag will start being up. So all I'll do from there is I'll pick up, uh, hold the spool, give it a little bit of a pull to make sure the hook is set. And let the fish run if it wants to, and you just play it back to the boat. Now, in this situation, 
I am effectively downtime. Bringing the, my baits for downtime from both. So if you were playing like an energetic, well, a hard fighting fish back to the boat against the tide, just take your time. If you like between estuaries and that, you will catch flounders, you will catch small bass, and like that there, that was either a dogfish or a bullet. So it was more of like a twanging bite. Bass are more of like a rattle and a bream. More of a positive hit. Whatever it was, it's come back. doesn't feel like a bream. Hopefully I'm wrong because it feels quite heavy. Like I say, it feels like a bullus to me. Now I've only got a light hook length on. Light in comparison. If I was fishing for bullus, I would generally use 50 pound plus. So this hook length oh, is destroyed. <laughs> yeah. See where he's taking the ragworm? Not bad, he'll be. Maybe three or four pounds. Not what I wanted though, but beats a blank. Yeah, I've got like, really interesting eyes. One of the ways you can tell that this is a bullus is by these flaps here. See, a dogfish doesn't have those. A tip for holding these, like you saw there, they try and wrap up and rub their skin against you. If you can lock your fingers up underneath their jaw, like that. Take hold of it with the other hand. There we go. Same yeah, look, that's what they do. It's going to sting later. You should always check your hook length after you've had a fish like that, like a dogfish or a bullet. You feel there that. He's rubbed that up with his skin, so I'm going to have to change that hook length. Just in the process of baiting up, that rod started going. I hope it's not another bullus. <laughs> don't really fancy having to change your hook length every time. Kilted bream have got a really strong bite. They're renowned for cushion soft hooks and uh, biting through weak hook lengths. So I would definitely recommend going above 15, 16 pounds. 20 pounds, 25 pounds. Yeah, it's definitely. So these um, two different types of hooks that I use are either chinos 
all these specimen extras. Well, when I'm using worm baits like now, these specimen extras are perfect. Really easy to thread a worm up. And give really nice presentation like that. Chino. Just in the difference of its design. You see it's a heavier gauge but it's got a smaller shank and it's got a wider gap on it. Chinos, if I'm going to be using crab baits, or paler crab, I'll go with a chino every time. Generally, with worms, because they give a better presentation, I like the extras. I find it's a little bit harder to get good presentation with worms with a chin up. It's just the heavier gauge wire, and still alright, look, but it's just, just not the same. Check that bit. This is um, this is one of the things as well, is it? Like I said, when the fish fish feeders are coming in, so they generally they aren't going to stay where you are. They're going to go past you. You want to make sure that as they're going past, you've got a good bait there. If you've got a lot of crabs there, you need to make sure you keep cycling your baits out to make sure that you have a good bait out on the bed, out on the, the seabed, as a bream's coming past. If you've left them for half an hour and the crabs have eaten all your baits off, you'll be sat with bait up, and you'll be sat with bare hooks as the fish come past. It's not too bad. I'm still like there. The bait's above the hook. So if a fish took that, chances are it wouldn't take the hook. All I'm using, like I said, is just bagworm. Now, um, it's <laughs> you put yourself in the right place, put yourself at the right time with the right gear. If your bait's not right, you ain't going to catch off. So keeping your ragworm as fresh as possible <laughs> is sometimes a running battle. Um, the best thing you can try and do, really. When the newspaper gets damp like this, change it. If you're going to, if you're buying your worms like a day before or two days before, keep changing the newspaper. As soon as the newspaper gets damp, change it. You don't want to let them go damp. Otherwise, what they do is they start dying, and they'll just go. That one's on its way out. They want to be. Want to be properly fresh and wriggly. I just literally cast this out. He's digging a bit, it could be a brain. A little schooly bass. Nice looking fish, but not what we're after. I always find these little tiny ones the hardest one to hold. You know what I'm like I say, you will get a you will get a bycatch of them fishing in an estuary with worm. I'm expecting this to be another little bath. Look 
this is before if you can you get the eye out you get the hook out you've got another baby bass I've just literally cast this back out just doing a bait change just goes to show A little bit of movement sometimes can spark them on. Something that we have been getting more of lately down here on the south coast. A little cooch bream. I mean, that's nice. You will get the odd big one out at sea. But, uh, up here in the estuaries. I'm getting like loads of little tiny little tiny pepper bites. But, uh, it's usually black bream or cooch bream and a rock. Just big enough to register a bite and to steal your bait but not big enough to hook up. I think that's what I'm having here. But every now and again I just get like a little tiny. I might try scaling right down in a bit on one of the rods. See if I can find the culprit. That one tore off down tied. I was sure that one was going to be a bream. long left now to uh, to high water so we'll, be, we'll pass the best of the fishing now, uh, that one bull us we've had about, about 10 or 11 of them small bass but, uh, fortunately no brain that's fishing they are, uh, great to catch but difficult to catch if they were easy everyone would catch them Give these birds five minutes each. We'll wrap up and go on.